Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock in for Ellen Hudson today on the design team. Really excited to be with Ellen and excited to be sharing some Avery Owl watercolors with you today. And I'm going to be using the Little Mermaid and teaching you how to mix a brown color as well as paint the rest of the little picture here. The Avery L watercolors come in bottles. They're little half ounce bottles and they are the size and plastic, I guess, of the same kind of bottles we're used to for reinkers. So if you're wondering how large they are, that is the size of them. And then you squeeze color out into a palette or onto whatever you're going to paint from. The chart on the right is made from all the colors that I have. I don't know if there's more colors than that out there, but I have 10 colors. And you can do something really simple, like get an 89 cent palette from like Home Depot. I got this one. It's just a little tile that I got from the tile department. And you can put color on there and pick it up with your brush, mix it, do whatever you want with it. You can also get a little palette like this. I marked mine with Avery L, so I keep track of which colors which set of colors they are, you can actually write around each one of them what the color is that's in the little well. Um, and then make yourself a color chart so you know what colors you're getting. The hexagons that I made, you could do that with circles or rectangles, are solid color and then I watered out the rest beyond that. And here's the little stamp set I'm going to be using. And I stamped it onto some watercolor paper, it's cold pressed paper, and I put it in my misty so I could make the sentiment wavy at the top. I just thought that would be kind of a fun way to do it, to create some water. And when I'm watercoloring a background that I'm not sure of, I usually watercolor the background first in case I mess it up. Don't ask me how many times it has been messed up, but yeah, there we are. We're going to paint the background first. And I'm painting it with water. I'm, I let my water be a little bit dirty so you could see what I'm doing, but generally I recommend cleaner water than this. But I had a little bit of blue paint in there so that you'd be able to see what I'm doing. You're going to be able to change and add a little bit more to this, so don't worry if your water doesn't get all the way to where you want it to be, like to the edge of an image or something, because you can move it around a little further. But having the water down there gives the pigment somewhere to run to, because it's going to try to travel along wherever those channels of water are. So notice that my, my water that's on there is puddly, so that there's plenty of water because I want this to be soft and washy. But I'm also leaving some hard edges. Notice that I'm doing like some stripes along the sides. The bottom is almost looks like drips coming down. And I'm leaving some white spots. And I'm just going to mix a couple of blues in there, a little bit of the aqua kind of color, and just play around with it and have fun. Don't stress out about, oh my gosh, Sandy had this color. I've got this other color. Use what colors you have and just have fun with it and see how they mix. Because watercolors, when they're right next to each other, they're going to start to blend. And if you have this much puddled water, by the time it's done drying, you may even find that it's all gonna feel like one color. And you know, if it, if it blends too much. So try to have some areas of really specific dark color and then some areas of really specific light color. Along that top edge, I'm trying to create the look of the surface of the water, so letting my lines be broken up and horizontal just a little bit, just to make it a little more interesting. And then I'm gonna make sure that my color is all the way down to the edge of my mermaid. Don't paint the mermaid till the water is dry, till the paint is dry out there, because yeah, don't ask. Just know that I know the truth of that. You need to make sure it's dry first, because you don't wanna bleed anything and that is probably my most common need for reshooting something is because I oopsed and did not wait long enough for something to dry itself. But just kind of dropping some colors in here, playing around and having fun with it. And that is the joy of watercolors, just have fun with it. Don't stress out because when people stress out, that's when it becomes no fun anymore. And we don't want anything to become no fun. We want to continue to enjoy ourselves or else we won't continue this wonderful thing that we call art. And I want you to continue it. So don't let yourself get to the point of being grumpy about it because it didn't work. Just relax and let the paint flow. I'm going to try to use a color for her face. It's called Mimosa. And it's really, really, really pale. 
So there's a couple of different ways you can handle that. You can add another color to it. I'm going to add a little bit of fizz to it. Fizz is an orange color. You could also make it more of the red color. There's a lot of different ways you can adjust it, but I'm going to let it dry completely and then I'm going to try to mix a brown. Now brown is basically blue, yellow, and red together. And if they're in equal parts, they'll make kind of a really normal brown. But since we don't have a blue, yellow, and red in this set, then I'm just going to keep mixing other colors together. Now this has gotten too red. I've got too much red in it, so I want to add blue and yellow. So I can add a green to a red, and then I'll have blue, red, and yellow together. And then I'm like, oh, okay, well, need, I need to add a little bit more blue to it. So then I add a little more red to it. And I just keep going until I get to the point where it turns brown. And it just takes a little time to get there. So this is a reddish brown, and I was satisfied with it. So decided to do that. I got a little blobby on her face. But I am going to darken her face because I don't like how pale she is. I want her to have a little richer color in her. But I'm going to need to do that by color layering and doing a wash of another color over top of that. But first I'm going to get her hair all painted in with the first layer of this brown color that I've mixed. And get that hair underneath of her arms. And then the recommendation would be to let it dry completely. But I'm going to paint just a wash of the same color that I had, but I had more water in my brush, so it watered it down just a little bit. And then I can mix up a brown again. I want to mix up a darker brown because I want more of a difference between her hair and her face. And so I'm just going to keep adding colors together until they come out looking like what I want. And, you know, you can grab a tiny drop of something, get used to the idea of which colors are going to make a color push more toward what you want it to. And that's one of the fun things about watercolor is learning how they play together. So you may find that adding a little bit of a purple is going to give you a different effect and make it go brown faster or less fast than another color will. And that's just a matter of practicing and learning how to do that by just doing it over and over again until you figure it out. And with colors like this, it's an interesting challenge to try to make something out of something that's not actually there. So I've painted a little bit of that lemongrass color. I'm going to throw in a little bit of the celery and try to get a little, just a little bit of shading along her bottom part of her little mermaid outfit and her tail. I don't know what the bottom of a mermaid is called. I'm sure the tail is called a tail, but her legs, are they, are they actually legs underneath of there? <laughs> I don't know what you call it. Somebody Google that and leave me comments and tell me what the, what the bottom half of a mermaid is called. So I've added a little bit more color to her seashell outfit and to the, the little uh, seahorse. And then it dried, so now I'm adding a little bit of texture using the celery color so that I have a little bit of that light color showing through with some of the darker color in there on top. And then I decided to make my my little seahorse go a little bit darker in color and add, add some red onto him. I hope this was helpful to you in figuring out how to mix a brown color. And as an alternate, if you need a gray color, you can use the same kind of mix, but just lean a little bit more toward the blues and a little bit less toward the warm colors, unless you want a warm gray, in which case add a little more of the warm colors. Play around with it until you get the kind of color you're looking for, and you might write down those combinations so you remember next time which ones to use, but it'll all depend on what kind of combination you use them in. So here's some more videos from Ellen Hudson if you'd like to go see something else, and I will see you guys again another time. Take care.